Heat moves up, so it wants to go out your attic. If you've dealt with that, it'll want to move through your walls. In part, that's because your walls, like your attic, are the most exposed bit of your house. They got wind blowing on them. They're, they're, a lot of heat can be pulled out through those walls. So insulating your walls will be a big benefit, in, even more so if you have them dense packed because that becomes a solid air barrier. And you'll be very, very impressed about how much of a noise barrier that becomes too. Your house becomes much quieter. The walls are exposed to wind, to rain, to all sorts of things that will pull heat off of it. Under there, in the basement or in the crawl space, it's much more protected. That's another reason why wall insulation is far more important than basement insulation. We can see by these holes here that this wall has been insulated. The way to insulate a wall after construction is to cut a hole, usually about this size, stick in a hose. This is one of those jobs you can't really do on your own. You need a very specialized equipment that can blow cellulose or fiberglass under enough pressure to fill the whole joist cavity and to fill it tightly. What's the common practice today is to do something called dense packing. Dense packing reduces the R value of the insulation you're installing a little bit, but what it does in addition is it creates an air barrier. So suddenly you have a solid air barrier in your walls, no air is getting through, and your walls are insulated. So they cut the holes in every joist cavity and blow it in. And then there's these plugs to fill it in. There are ways to do it where you don't have to have any holes cut. They could carefully find all the nail holes in a piece of wood and open them, cut them, and remove the siding, blow it in that way and put the siding back. That's a better way. They'll charge you a little more for that probably, but it's much prettier. 